All right, this is lesson 5.4 about trapezoids and kites. This is the last lesson in this unit over quadrilaterals, and so we'll cover just these last two different types of quadrilaterals. And the first one is a trapezoid. Again, something you've probably seen before, uh, probably worked with a little bit before, but we want to just clarify its properties. I'm going to make sure we can use those to understand something about their angles and their side lengths. So a trapezoid, by definition, is a quadrilateral, so it has four sides with exactly one pair of parallel sides. So you can see in this image here, um, you have this top side and this bottom side are parallel to each other, and then the legs are not parallel to each other. Um, and so those top sides are called bases, or the top and bottoms are called bases, and the sides are called legs, and the bases will be parallel to each other. Um, the base angles, uh, there are two pairs of base angles, one pair here at the bottom, those are called a uh, pair of base angles, and then two here at the top are called pair of base angles. A specific type of trapezoid is called an isosceles trapezoid, um, where uh, the legs are congruent to each other. So it's a normal trapezoid, except the legs happen to be the same length, and we would call that isosceles trapezoid. And we'll look at those a little bit more because we know um, it's a little bit easier to figure, uh, figure out uh, their measurements of the sides and of the angles if it's an isosceles trapezoid, uh, because there are a few properties um, that we know about them. Uh, so, the properties of an isosceles trapezoid that we'll be looking at. First, is that each pair of base angles is congruent. Um, so, if you look at this trapezoid here, um, if this is an isosceles trapezoid, parallel opposite, parallel bases, congruent side, congruent legs, and then the base angles are going to be congruent to each other. So, these two bottom angles here at A and D are congruent to each other, and here the top two at B and C are congruent to each other. Okay? So, that's one property. Another one is that the diagonals are congruent. Okay? So, the length of the diagonals are going to be congruent to each other in isosceles trapezoid. And then lastly, uh, the congruent base angles in a trapezoid prove that it's an isosceles trapezoid. So in the same way um, as over here, when we have an isosceles trapezoid, that tells us that the base angles are going to be congruent. Each pair is congruent to each other. Um, it works in reverse as well. If we have a figure um, with, uh, if we have a trapezoid where the base angles are congruent to each other, then we know that's an isosceles trapezoid, and so that would prove that the legs are going to be the same length. Um, and so it's, it's the reverse of the, the first property there. Um, as with all the properties that we've been learning in this lesson, um, you want to make sure you know what they mean and, and how to use them in the different situations. So when I'm looking at a problem, I see like, oh, this is talking about the base angles, so I'm going to look at my properties of a trapezoid um, that talk about the base angles. We'll also look at the mid-segment of a trapezoid. Um, the mid-segment of a trapezoid is the segment that connects the midpoint of its legs. So I've got my bases here and then my legs on the side. And the mid-segment that runs through the trapezoid connects the exact middle of each of the legs, so here and here. And that's important because um, if it's connecting the midpoints, then where the mid-segment is, it's, it's like cutting each leg in half, right? So this part of the, um, the leg is congruent to this part, and this part of the leg is congruent to this part. So that's the mid-segment. Um, the properties of the mid segment um, are one, that it's parallel to each of the bases. So if this mid segment here at MN, it is parallel to this base here and this base here. Okay. And um, its length is equal to half of the sum of the bases. Okay. So the length of this segment MN here, the mid segment, is equal to the, two, the lengths of the two bases, AB plus CD. Uh, divided by 2, or times 1 half. Uh, we'll look at an example of that, but those are the properties of the mid-segment. Again, if you're working on a problem that concerns the mid-segment of a trapezoid, uh, then you'll want to look at the properties of the mid-segment of a trapezoid. Last, the last figure we'll look at is a kite. Okay, a kite is a quadrilateral with four sides uh, that has two pairs of consecutive congruent sides but the opposite sides are not congruent. Um, so if you look here, uh, this is a kite, obviously a figure you've, you've seen before, um, but this side is congruent to that side, and this side is congruent to that side. Okay, so it's got two pairs of consecutive congruent sides, one right after the other, uh, but the opposite sides are not going to be congruent to each other. Okay, so that's what makes it a kite. Uh, the properties of a kite are that the diagonals are perpendicular, so if I draw the diagonals through a kite, uh, those diagonals will be perpendicular to each other at their intersection, a 90 degree right angle. 
in that one pair of the opposite angles are congruent. Okay, that's another uh, property. Is that just one pair? Uh, not it's not both sets of opposite angles. It's just one pair of opposite angles are congruent to each other. Um, and you can see here in this figure which of that pair it is. Okay, um, and so those are the two properties of a kite. So we're looking at a few examples of how do we use the properties of trapezoid and kites to understand something about the measurements of their angles and their side lengths, um, or in the case of trapezoid, the mid-segment. Um, so in this first example in your notes, it says find the measure of each angle in the isosceles triangle. Okay, so we, or, oh, it says triangle. It should say trapezoid. That's funny. Um, so yes, it's an isosceles trapezoid. Um, we know that this angle K is 118 degrees, and so we want to find each of the rest of these. So if it's, an, if it's an isosceles trapezoid, then we know that the base angle pairs are congruent to each other. So if this angle K is 118 degrees, angle J is also going to be 118 degrees. Oops, forgot my J. So again, that is a property of a isosceles trapezoid um, that the base um, base uh, angles are congruent to each other. The the pairs are so J is congruent to K, and L will be congruent to M, but we don't know what L and M are yet. Okay, um, a way that we can figure that out is by using the fact that the trapezoid is a quadrilateral. So if this is a quadrilateral, we know that all of the angles should add up to 360 degrees. Well, we know two of them, and we know the last two have to be the same measurement. So we can set up an equation that looks like this. The measure of angle K plus the measure of angle J plus the measure of angle L plus the measure of angle M. Okay? Now, as I just said, let me write it out. The measure of angle L is equal to the measure of angle M. Okay? Those should be equal to each other because they're, they're the consecutive base angles, right? So these should be congruent to each other, so the measurements be equal. So when I, uh, when I kind of work, start working through this, I know the measure of angle K is 118 degrees. I know the measure of angle J is 118 degrees. And I know that the measure of angle L and M will be equal to each other. So I'm going to replace M with L. And I'm going to replace M with I'm going to substitute it in um, because I don't want two different variables okay, or two different unknown angles here. I just want one unknown angle because it makes it easier to figure out. And the thing that I forgot to put here is that this is equal to 360. Okay? That's equal to 360. Why is it equal to 360? Because this is a quadrilateral. Okay? And this is a quadrilateral, so all of the angle, the sum of the angles should add up to 360, right? We've talked about that multiple times. Um, so I can start uh, solving from here. 118 plus 118 is 236, plus the measure, oops, rather, the two measures of angle L, right? So I just combine those two measurements of angle L, just two measurements of angle L, equals 360. I'll subtract the 236, that's two measurements of angle L, equal to 124. And then I'll divide by 2. Okay? Divide by 2, the measurement of angle L is equal to 62 degrees. And as we said above, the measure of angle L is equal to the measure of angle M. So if the measure of angle L is equal to 62 degrees, the measure of angle M is equal to 62 degrees. So to kind of walk through, back through that one, uh, because this is isosceles trapezoid, and we know that the um, uh, base angles are congruent to each other, J is also going to be 118, L and M should be the same, all of them should add to 360, so we set up this equation um, and got L to be 62, M would be the same, 62. So again, just using my properties there, one, the fact that the base angles are congruent, and two, the fact that it's a quadrilateral, and so all the angles add up to 360. So this is also in your notes. Um, in the diagram, segment MN is the mid-segment of trapezoid PQRS, and we want to find the length of MN. Okay? So we want to find the length of this segment right here. 
Well, our property of the mid-segment says that the length of MN should be equal to one-half the length of the bases, PQ plus SR, added together. Okay? So the length of this segment here, the mid-segment, should be equal to this plus this times one-half. Again, this is what the property says. So it's one half times 12 plus 28. Mn is equal to one half times 40. If you do it on your calculator, one half times 40, you're going to get 20. And so the length of Mn is 20 inches. Again, using the property of the mixed set segment that says that the mid-segment is half of the sum of the two bases, um, the lengths of, the, lengths of those two bases. So these two bases added together times one-half gives me the mid-segment length. All right, here we have, uh, here we have kite EFGH, and we're looking for angle G. Okay, what's the measurement of angle G? We know angle E is 60 degrees and angle H is 110 degrees. Um, so I'm working with a kite, so I'm going to look at the properties of a kite. Um, and I have a property of the kite that says the op one pair of opposite angles is congruent. Okay? One pair of opposite angles is congruent. And that's going to be these right here, okay? um, in between the two congruent sides, okay? the two opposite congruent sides. Um, and so this angle, F, is going to be congruent to H. Okay? Um, and so we'll be able to use that fact in order to figure out what G is. Okay? So again, because um, w the property says one pair of opposite angles are congruent, if H is 110, then the measurement of angle F is also 110. Okay. And so now we know F is 110, E is 60, H is 110, and we're just looking for G. Well, we have a quadrilateral here. What do all of the angles in a quadrilateral add up to? Measurement of angle E plus the measurement of angle F plus the measurement of angle G plus the measurement of angle H is equal to 360, right? It's a quadrilateral. The measurement of angle E is 60. The measurement of angle F, we said, is 110 because it would be congruent to this angle H. Plus the measurement of angle G, which we don't know yet. And plus the measurement of angle H, which is also 110. Going to simplify 110 plus 110 plus 60 is 280 plus the measurement of angle G is equal to 360. Subtract 280 from both sides, the measurement of angle G is equal to 80 degrees. So the measurement of angle G is 80 degrees, a okay, 360 minus 280, a okay, 360 minus 280. So again, I have a kite, I look at the properties of a kite, it says the opposite, one pair of opposite angles are congruent, so that's what F is, and then I know that all of the angles should add up to 360 because it's a quadrilateral, and I solve to find G. As always, identify what do you have in the problem, are you working with a kite, a trapezoid, uh, some other quadrilateral, um, and then look at what do the properties say about that and how is that going to help me figure out this problem.